Okay, I'm going to turn the Tesla coil back on. Does everyone know what a Tesla coil is? A Tesla coil is a transformer. There's one coil here that we put a, a voltage into, and it has to be a fluctuating voltage so that it can jump the air gap. It makes a magnetic field every time the power goes on and off on this small coil, which jumps to the big coil and has a lot more winds. And one side of the big coil comes up here and goes to nothing. One side's ground, one side goes to nothing. So this creates a very high voltage and the voltage has to go, you see these little sparks going out? It's mm -hmm. going off into the atmosphere. And so this creates a lot of electric field around the Tesla coil. So I'm going to energize the power field on three. Three. <laughs> Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, come on. There you go. <laughs> That's so cool. How was your hypothesis? We put the wrong bulbs in. <laughs> we? <laughs> yeah, we. We did it together, right? <laughs> okay, that is neat. Whoa. That is really neat. Check that out. What do you think? I think that's Can awesome. Can you see those colors? Yes. So you want to put the red one over there. Uh -huh. Come closer. Thank you. And the green one here. Come closer, come closer, come closer. And why did it work when you touched it? <laughs> it's my personality. <laughs> <laughs> Write it down. It's his personality. I need a pen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it would probably... Go off. I think it would probably work when you touch it too. You try it. Very good. Very good. Very, very, very good. Very good. Excellent. Wonderful. That is neat. So, what do we make of all that? I can smell ozone. You can smell ozone. How does it smell? It smells like rain. It smells really good. It's not raining. <laughs> yes, it does. And why? does ozone smell like rain? Because in a thunderstorm there's lightning and lightning causes ozone, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Does it go shooting through the air? Okay, so let's see if we can figure out what's actually going on here. Okay. Remember what this is? It's a special flashlight. This is my hornworm finder. <laughs> Remember? Uh -huh. When you have hornworms, those big green caterpillar yep. worms eating your tomatoes, mm -hmm. you go out just after dusk with a black light, a okay. UV flashlight. You turn it on. Mm -hmm. See, that doesn't look so black, but it's kind of purplish. But most of the power is coming out as an invisible ultraviolet light. When you apply that, I wonder Should if we off? could turn the lights off for a minute, some mm -hmm. of them. Just Naomi's up there. Naomi's, Naomi's, Naomi's. There we go. Now can you see the color? You see? Well, there it is. Can you see that one? Mm -hmm. oh, see how that glows mm -hmm. when I put the light on and the blue by contrast? Now you can see it. Isn't that fun? That is really fun. Okay, lights back on. Out of the dark. Ages. <laughs> Okay, so something is happening here. Inside of each of these tubes is some mercury, some mercury vapor. And it's at a low pressure, it's less than atmospheric pressure, it's kind of like a vacuum with some mercury in it. And when this gets around a electric field like the Tesla coil generates, it causes some of the atoms to get excited, which means some of the electrons go to a bigger orbital for a second, and then they fall back down, and when they do, they give off light of a particular color. It turns out that the light color from mercury is invisible. Hmm. The color happens to be ultraviolet, which means we can't see it. 
but the ultraviolet light then hits the white powder on the inside of this tube. And this powder fluoresces. And fluoresces means that when it's hit by the ultraviolet light, it gets excited, and then those atoms have their electrons drop back down to the normal orbital, and they give off light. And by choosing the material to put on the coating here, we get the different colors. It's real tricky to make a fluorescent light so that it will be white. And they do it by combining different elements together. Okay? Uh, I'd like to show you a photograph of a bunch of minerals all under a black light. Take a look at this. Can you see all those minerals? That's neat. These are a bunch of different minerals. Can you pick out from that picture which of these minerals happen to be the mineral called fluorite that fluorescence was named after? And if you guess these two, you're right. So that's fluorite. So if you choose the right mineral and put it on these tubes, then in the presence of ultraviolet light, it will fluoresce. And that means that it gets excited by one color of light and gives off another. And some of you are going to say, well, is it only ultraviolet light that will do that? Mm -hmm. And that's where the science of fluorescence gets really interesting because the answer is no.